Now I'm pretty sure most of you know that anytime any kind of tool that I use comes out with dynamic content inclusion, you know I'm excited to talk about it. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a recent update to Bloxy Premium. This is not the free version, this is the premium version. We can now start to leverage the power of using tools like ACF, Metabox, Toolset, and so on. It's still fairly basic right now, but it's a fantastic start to see this theme is actually supporting it straight out of the box. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a quick look over some of those key additions, as well as some of the other things that I think are notable in this recent update in Bloxy Premium. So for this, we're gonna to need to use Bloxy Pro. We can't use the free version. The Pro version has the extra features that we need. If you wanna find out more about the premium version, there'll be a link in the description below, and you can take a look at all the features that that includes. So once you've installed the premium version of Bloxy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with this normal WordPress post loop, and we're gonna add in some custom data. So if we head back over into the dashboard, there's one thing we need to do before we can even make any changes to this content and include the ACF based fields. And that is we need to go into Bloxy, we need to come into Bloxy itself, and inside there we're going to hop over to the extensions option, open up the pro extensions and make sure the post type extras is activated. This is going to give us the ability to add in this ACF metadata. Now you're not limited to using just ACF, you can use pods, I believe you can use Metabox and Toolset. So that's pretty cool to see. I'm just gonna demonstrate ACF because we're gonna use the free version of ACF. Okay, so once we've done that, we're simply gonna head into Appearance and into Customize. This will open up the customizer inside WordPress itself, and we now have the Bloxy customizer. And if we take a look on the left-hand side, there's a ton of different options. What we're interested in though is this blog posts and single posts, and also categories. Let's hop into the blog posts, and let's open up the news section, which is what I've set to be my normal blog post section. So this is what we saw on the front end of the site, and nothing you haven't seen before, the title, the featured image, a brief amount of information, and then some metadata. And we can control the design and all those kinds of things inside here. Pretty cool. What we're interested in though, is if we scroll down to the option to customize the cards, we'll open the cards option. This is where we find what we've seen before, which are all the card elements. So again, the title, featured image, excerpt, and metadata. Now I'm pretty sure the eagle-eyed among you will notice we have another entry called ACF field, which is currently disabled. Now this will say ACF if you have ACF installed, but if you have something like Metabox or Tool set inside here, that would be what you'd see inside there, but it all operates in pretty much the same fashion. So what we could do is we can enable this by clicking the little I symbol, and that now pulls in the first value in the post's additional meta field. So whatever is associated with your post's meta type. So you can see there's price and 14.99. So that's basically what we just inserted. If we expand this, you can see we can choose the field we want to use. In this example, I've only got two. I've got price, which is a numeric field, and location, which is a text field. But we'll take a look at adding things like a select field in a little later, just to show that it all works inside this particular option. Okay, so we'll leave that as price, and you can see we can enable or disable the label that's associated with that specific dynamic meta field. In this example, it's the price. Then we have after, before, and fallback. Now, if you've ever used a page editor like Elementor, you've probably seen the after, before, and fallback when you're working with a lot of different dynamic values. And this works in exactly the same fashion. Let's take our price field as a simple example. We'd obviously want to put in what currency this is currently valued at. So for example, we're working with pounds being in the UK, so I can click on before, drop in my pound symbol, and you'll see what will happen now is that we'll place it before the dynamic ACF meta field and after the label. The label always takes precedence. That's gonna be the first thing in this link. And if we wanted to, for example, say per month or something, we could just put at the end per month, and you can see that will then add that at the end. Now don't worry if it doesn't show it all, it usually shows it fine on the front end. It's just sometimes you get this little weird glitch inside the actual uh, customizer. Okay, so the fallback, what exactly does that do? Well, let's just say, for example, that you have the custom meta field set as optional and someone doesn't fill a value in, in a particular field. You can use the fallback to just basically put in some generic value. It could be POA, for example, for price on application, anything you kind of want. Okay, so that's how easy it is to add that inside there. If we want to add another one in, all we need to do is clone this first one and then you'll see we now have another entry called ACF field. So we can expand this out. We can change it this time to location. We'll take off the per month because that doesn't make any sense there whatsoever. And obviously we'll take off the pound sign. 
But you can see now what happens is it says location is Cardiff. Pretty cool, all works the way you would expect. So really, really simple to work with. And then if you want to, you can simply reorder these, position them anywhere you want inside the structure of your actual layout itself. So really simple to work with all of those different options. Now, sometimes you don't necessarily want to have these dynamic fields as being a separate entity. Let's say, for example, you wanted to have some post meta and you wanted to create a custom field. There was also some kind of meta information. Let's disable these ACF fields we just created. We'll disable those completely. And let's open up the post meta option. So let's expand this. Let's enable it, first of all. Once we've done that, we'll expand it. Now, you can see at the moment, we've got things like author. And we've also got categories. So nothing you haven't already seen. However, we can come in here and we can scroll down and we also have ACF or whatever version you're using, you know, whether it's Metabox and so on. You have the option inside there to add in via post meta. So once we select that, you can see what we can do now is we can change this what we want. So we'll say add that, we'll open this up, and now we can use this in pretty much the same way that we just saw when we add it as just a normal ACF field. So we can set price, we can set location, whichever one we want, and you see this is now added into the actual dynamic meta information. So let's say we'll set that to be location, for example, but obviously, you know, you can set this in anything that you wanted. You can still use the after, the before, and the fallback values, so it's pretty cool to see you can do that. We can also delete any of these other ones we don't want. We could say, let's also put the price in there, for example, so we could clone this like we saw earlier on, and we could then just open this up, change that from location, drop in price, and you see now we've created a kind of meta version of doing this. And then we can order these wherever we want to. So we can say we want to put this underneath the title, for example, and you can see now if we scroll up, it says Cardiff, 1499, London, so on. So you can see how all of this is then controlled. And if you want to adjust the styling when you've got the meta side of things, then you can simply adjust all the styling by coming into design. And you can see we've got the excerpt font, your meta font, the meta colors, all those kinds of things. So when you roll over, if it's a link kind of thing, it'll change color and so on. So you can control how this looks, the fonts, the colors, those kinds of things directly inside you. So that gives us two really easy ways in which we can include dynamic information using a tool like Advanced custom fields or meta box into the normal listing loop for our posts. Pretty cool. Now, before we move on to taking a look at how we work with the single post template, there's one other thing that I think is worth noting that's also just been added into the recent version of Bloxy. If we come back at the cards option, back to the blog posts options, if we scroll down, you can see we've got a new option called post filter. So if we enable the feature, you can see that pulls up the ability to quickly and easily filter through the various different kinds of post categories that we have for this particular post setup. And if we come down to the post filters, you can see we get the arrow that allows us to then go ahead and customize various different aspects of this. Again, visibility based upon the different kinds of devices, those kinds of things, spacing, the filter source, and you can see we can choose between categories and tags, pretty cool. And also we can come at the design and customize aspects of that, or we can pick from two different kinds of designs, which again, we can commit the design options. And we say we want to set the font color, for example, to white, which makes a bit more sense. And it's all kind of in keeping with the design that you've got set up, border radiuses, button padding, those kinds of things. So as with everything inside the Bloxy theme, it's really easy to customize and you get a lot of control. Now, as always, these are great options, but I do have a couple of things that I would love to see. So if Sergi is watching this or any of the guys behind Bloxy Pro or Bloxy Premium, a couple of things I would like to take on board. First of all, I would love to see the ability to customize the ACF information independently. We're not relying upon global theme options, should we say, like fonts, weights, colors, typography, those kinds of things. In the same way that we can control most aspects of various things like titles and the content and things like that and the metadata, I'd like to have full control over styling of that side of things as well, spacing, everything just so we can tie things into the way that we want. Maybe even having the ability to set up multiple dynamic meta fields into a list or into, you know, applying these to this side by side on a horizontal line as opposed to being one on top of the other in a vertical kind of formation. Just gives us more control over these cards. But other than that, I think it's an absolutely fantastic starting point. It's something that I know that when I spoke to Sergey probably quite a while ago, one of those ideas that I sort of said, I'd love to see something like this. So it's great to see that this is being implemented. I'm not saying it's anything to do with me. It makes logical sense to have this kind of content. But really cool to see that. 
Okay, so now we've seen this, let's move on to taking a look at the single post template and some of the options we have inside there to control what we want to display. Now we've ticked off the list adding in ACF or meta fields into our blog archive page. How about we take a look at adding in some meta information into the single post template using Bloxy Premium. So this is the starting point for how the single post looks. And if you want to control the look and the layout of this, you've got all the options on the left hand side. Now before we move on to take a look at the option to do with dynamic data, there's one other new feature I want to bring you aware of. And again, this is one of those things that removes the need for another third party plugin. It's the read progress option. If we enable this, this will give us a progress bar across the top of our page. And I'll show you that on the live site. It doesn't necessarily show up inside the preview window just because of the way the preview window is actually displaying. Let's open up the options. And again, you can see we can auto hide this. We can control the visibility based upon what device. And we can also control some of the basics like the main color, the background color, and so on. So let me just publish the changes that we've made. We'll hop over to a page and we'll refresh this to make sure that we've got an up-to-date version. And now if you watch the top of the screen, you'll see as we start to scroll through the article, this gives us a orange indicator at the top of the screen that shows us where we are inside that article. Great if you want to show people how far they are inside a longer kind of content article. That's just one of those new features that's been added in very, very recently. Okay. So let's come back out of this. Let's open up the post title option. Now, so to get access to these ACF or whatever meta field tool you've got installed, we have to open up the post title option. And this is where we can kind of control those different aspects. So let's just open this up by clicking the expansion on the right hand side. And now we've got control of the various elements and also the design. So let's just say we want this design type two. This will then open up the type two design options. And you can see we now have our title, our meta information, excerpt those kinds of things displayed at the top section. Doesn't have any effect on the content underneath because that's independent of this top section. So what we can do now is we can enable the ACF fields if you want to. So again, we can just turn that on and you can see that shows up the 1499. And if we come in, expand this out, you can see we can choose between the price, the location, for example, label, whatever you want to kind of do inside there. But this is where I would love to see that separate control over this meta information and the color and the styling options. I don't really like the fact that it's all kind of grouped together, either in a global font setup or underneath the design, but primarily in the global setup. So for example, if we come down, you see we have no control inside here currently over this meta ACF information. We have control over things like the breadcrumbs and so on. We can control those, but that's about it. So we could say we want to change the breadcrumbs color and we'll set that to be white, for example. And we'll set this one to be slightly paler, just so we can see exactly what we're doing. And if you hover over, you'll get the orange effect. So pretty cool, you can see that, but we don't have any control over this because this is kind of related to what we have here with the body text, which is fine inside the body context, but doesn't really work in this context. Okay, so that's the basics of that side of things. And again, if we want to, we can add extra meta fields inside here, and we can set this up to be, for example, this will be the price option, and you can use the before and after and so on. So all those options are available to you inside here as well. So everything you'd expect to see other than, like I say, the ability to easily control the actual color and the positioning of this. Because you can see as we start to add more in, it pushes the heading down and doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'd like to see something in the same vein as this. We could just align them horizontally just to make things a little bit little bit nicer layout kind of thing. But that's basically how we access these in a very simple form. So now we've taken a look at how we can start to add ACF meta fields or other kinds of meta fields into our post loop. Let's take a look at how we can do some quite cool things with the categories feature. Now this isn't quite as feature packed as what we've seen in the first part of this video, but it's still worth noting. And I think I'd like to see some more things added into this, but I'll cover those as we go through this particular section. Now, when you use the option inside the customizer to edit your blog post and your single posts, you also have an option for categories. And as you can see, we've got a couple of categories, property and archive in this example. So if we open up property, you see that our design currently looks a little different. We also have this sort of section at the top. Well, we can control all of this. This is kind of added into the design itself. So let me just hop over into the category viewer a second. For example, when we create categories, and these are just normal post categories, there's my prop property. 
We're going to open that up and you can see inside here, we've got the options to add in the description, a featured image, and also apply accent colors to both the initial text color, the hover, the background initial, and the background hover color. So you can adjust these. And again, you have all the same controls inside you, including that global color palette you have as part of Bloxy. So I've already gone ahead and done that for the property side of things. Let's come back over to a customizer. Let's open up our categories and inside here we can do the usual things. We can control how this all looks, the layout style. If you wanted to have this different to the one we had on the previous section, we look at the home page for our posts, you can do. You can choose from any of these grid kind of layout options. We'll keep to using this option though. So it's the, the same kind of thing. And you can, if you want to, come into your cards options and you can customize this, including adding those ACF meta fields inside you and setting things like boxed, simple, those kinds of things. So all the full controls are inside there. But if we come back out of this, go back to our cards options, and we're going to come into page title this time. This is, again, where we can control how this looks. So you can see, if we expand this type 2 option, we now have that featured image at the top with our text and thing overlaid on the top of it. And you can see we can use the title, the description, breadcrumbs, and so on inside here. So we can enable or disable these features, which is, again, pretty cool to see. If we come over to the design side of things, we can control various different aspects inside here, including the image overlay color. So we can say we want to put, for example, a black overlay. We'll adjust the opacity on that to something like so. There we go. And if you want to, you can control your description font color. So we'll set that to be white. The font title color, we'll set that to be white. And also the things like the breadcrumbs, we can set those to be white as well. Uh, we'll set the hover colors and so on inside here. So there we go. You can customize this, including the fonts, default font families, all those kinds of things as well. So it's very easy to see how you can customize all these different aspects. Now, obviously, in this section, there's no options that I can currently see to add in any kind of ACF elements. If we come to the title section, for example, it's just simply the normal default options. No options inside here for those custom ACF fields. So again, it would be nice to see some additional options inside you because you may want to have ACF custom fields associated with your particular categories. So I think this is a great starting point now for some of the things we can start to do inside Bloxy Premium to add in and tie in these custom meta fields. It's all a really positive step in the right direction to remove our reliance upon third party plugins to do some really basic features. Now, if you want to learn more about Bloxy and how you can start to leverage that by building really great looking fast loading websites, check out this video next. As always, all the links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.